NBC Sports, in association with TBS, presents the best of college basketball. Today, the Bruins of UCLA versus the DePaul Blue Demons. Brought to you by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Chevrolet and your Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. And by the Kemper Group and the independent agents who represent us. If it's worth insuring, it's worth Kemper. Jam-packed Horizon Arena in Rosemont, Illinois, just outside Chicago, where Ray Myers, the Paul Blue Demons, with a record of 8-0, play host to Larry Brown's Bruins of UCLA, who are 6-0. Holiday greetings, everybody. Bob Costas along with Al McGuire and Billy Packard. Welcome to a college basketball classic. DePaul is rated number one, UCLA number three, and for the Blue Demons, Al, something of a revenge match they remember last year when their season ended abruptly in the West Regional. I don't think Ray Meyer and DePaul will stub their toe this year. Ray Meyer is the father image of the Windy City. He had 631 wins in 39 years at DePaul. I believe that he promised his 15 grandchildren that they'll win today. What about Larry Brown at UCLA, Billy? Well, he's some 600 wins short and all 15 grandchildren short, but he's a great young coach, took his team to the Final Four championship game. They'll be prepared. He doesn't have to worry about Ray Meyer. He needs to worry about Mark Aguirre. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off in just a minute here on NBC. When I was coaching, I was the boss. I used to feed him, dress him. Get them to bed on time. Now I treat them to our favorite beer, right? Light beer from Miller. Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer. And what else? It's less filling, Red. And they really like the taste. Another beer, anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do it. Uh -huh. yeah. What's the magic word? Please. Please. Right. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. <laughs> alternator light won't go out. Uh-oh. What do you think it is, Mr. Goodwrench? Well, let's take a look. Mr. Goodwrench has the right GM equipment available to work on your General Motors car. Thousands of dollars worth. But he also knows the value of a well-placed thumb. What's the problem? Just a stretched belt. I can replace it while you wait. All right! That great GM feeling. Where Mr. Goodwrench works. With genuine GM parts. Hey! driving half a car. To prove Haviland Supreme gives cars engine protection up front. I know, but... Well, you should know. It delivered proven protection and punishing state trooper testing. Yeah, but... Where's the rest of my car? Yeah. Here it comes. To prove Texaco's Haviland Supreme delivered improved mileage, too. Up front protection backed by improved mileage. That's Haviland Supreme. Do me a favor. I know. Prove how good Haviland is in the next county, huh? Get interest on checking with a now account. Okay, Ed, good take. You know, these now accounts sound great, but let's face it, there's a ton of places offering them. I understand they really vary, and I just don't have the time to check them all out. So who would know the most about it? Find out from the people who invented checking. Your full-service bankers. They're professionals who can explain the various now accounts and advise you on the right one. Look for this symbol of a full-service bank. We've got the answers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rosemont Horizon. This is Jim Rebat, the voice of DePaul basketball. And now let's meet this afternoon's starting lineup. First, the University of California at Los Angeles. The visiting Bruins start at one forward, a 6'6 junior from DeRitter, Louisiana, number 11, Michael Sanders. At the other forward, 6'7", and a sophomore from Mission Hills, California, number 30, Darren Day. At center, a 6'7", freshman from Los Angeles, number 54, Kenny Fields. At one guard is a 6'3", sophomore from Pasadena, number 14, Michael Holton. And at the other guard, a 6'1 sophomore from New Britain, Connecticut, number 10, Rod the Rocket Foster. 
the Bruin head coach, a 1963 graduate of the University of North Carolina in his second season, Larry Brown. Junior co-captain, Chicago Westinghouse, 24, Mark Aguirre. At the other forward, 6'8", sophomore, Chicago King, 34, Sweet T, Teddy Krupp. In the middle, 6'10", sophomore, Chicago Carver, 32, T.C., Terry Cumming. One guard, 6'2", junior, Chicago Westinghouse, 44, Skip Dillard. And the other guard, 6'2", senior, co-captain, East Orange, New Jersey, 23, the glider, I Bradshaw. The Demon Coach, a 1938 graduate of the University of Notre Dame and a member of the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame in his 39th season, the coach himself, Ray Meyer. age 55, you're wanted by Kemper, because drivers your age or older are among the safest on the road, so the cavalry wants you. Kemper offers drivers 55 and over up to a 10% discount now, and guaranteed renewal at age 60 and beyond, if you've been with us for the five previous years. For auto discounts and guaranteed renewal, call out the cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. What a nice way to break the ice. Not a seat to be had at the Horizon Center. The ball has won 45 consecutive home games, 42 of those in tiny alumni hall in downtown Chicago. The last three years, the call with the tip. And here is Skip Dillard to Aguirre, going baseline where he finds Terry Cummings, working in fact on a Bradshaw and Clyde Bradshaw. Basket. Back comes UCLA, down two zip. DePaul opening up in a man-to-man -man defense. Out high Fields. Works it to Holton inside Darren Day. A dunk to Kenny Fields, and the freshman ties the game at two. Bob, as you pointed out, both teams playing man-to-man -man at the start. Look for DePaul to go zone a little bit earlier than UCLA would. In the last two years, these teams have split four games. Overall, in seven games, the series is 4-3. UCLA. Now, Billy DePaul only goes to the zone if you have a lead. They have an eight-point lead. They'll have to settle back in and try to see if UCLA can score from the outside. I'm surprised to see Darren Day on Aguirre as opposed to Sanders. UCLA with the steal, but then Holton can't save it in bounds, and DePaul will have it right back. With Day down here, he doesn't have the physical presence to stay with Aguirre. Look for Aguirre to take him down in low early. DePaul is 8-0, but they have had problems in recent games. They were down by 12 against Northwestern before rallying to win. Nearly blew a 16-point lead and a victory over North Texas State. Had trouble in a close game against Loyola of Chicago. Mike Sanders bats it out of bounds. It's still DePaul ball. UCLA's last game was a week ago. They clobbered Temple. The game was played in Tokyo, Japan. That pass was telegraphed by Aguirre inside. Great quickness in the UCLA ball. Bradshaw, the southpaw, brings the dribble outside against the defense of Michael Holton. There is not a single senior on the UCLA roster. Terry Cummings, baseline. That's where he likes that jumper. Aguirre. Aguirre, who is hitting 57% from the field 
this year and averaging more than 21 points a game, gives DePaul the lead at 4 2. He's a scoring machine. Pick him up. Well, they're afraid Sanders will pile out on them, Billy. Right. UCLA has the advantage in depth. Ray Meyer seldom goes beyond the sixth man. Jumper by Rocket Rod Foster, no good. Loose ball to Sanders, and we're tied again at four. Field goal, Michael Sanders. Well, he's only 6'5", and one of the quickest sleepers in the country. Sanders is calling the offense. He runs the show. He keeps the rhythm of the game going, offensively and defensively. DePaul wants to play a slower game, not to get into a rat race with UCLA. Bradshaw. From 20, short. Line drive, rebound to Rocket Rod Foster. You let this guy get into the open field, and it's like Gale Sayers. You'll never stop him. Darren Day hitting 72% from the field. But he misses. Sanders follows in that short two. Inside Day. Got it. It counts in a foul on the play. All the kids really get off the floor beautifully for UCLA. They're quick leapers, much like people saw two weeks ago when Louisville played. Every UCLA starter is hitting better than 50% from the field, led by this guy at the line, Darren Day, who's shooting 72% from the field, 93% from the free throw line, but selective with the shots, averaging 15.2, and he is the top UCLA scorer, Al. They spread the it around. Was on well, Skip Dillard, his first they're playing their game now. They're breaking off the rebound. Darren I think the ball has to slow it down more. they got to get Cummins player. and Grubbs into the game. Grubbs is the problem. He's starting slow. They're trying to get him into the flow. He only took five shots over the last two ball games. They must get him out of the gate. He was the one that blew him out in UCLA last year when he scored 28 points. Somebody threw something down on the floor. They're just holding up the action for a second or two. Ray Meyer, 67 years of age. Most wins of any active coach, better than 600. That's sixth on the all-time list. He's had his club in the NCAA four of the last five years. He's in his 39th season as the head coach of the Blue Demons, dating back to 1942 and George Mikan. Well, yesterday he looked like a young coach, didn't he, Billy? We were at practice. looked like 45 years of age. And how many years more do you want, Ray? <laughs> I think he wants 10. And the heir apparent, his son, Joey's promised the contract after Ray leaves. They're still trying to get Aguirre down in low. And a whistle as Cummings made his move along the baseline and a UCLA foul with 17-20 to play in the first half and UCLA in front 7-4. The Bruin Cummins foul was on number 54, Kenny Field. Here's Kenny that man-to-man man -man out of bounds. Now we've seen it uh, cause some problems time and again. Fields the freshman on the foul, his first. Cummings in the lane, short pop. It's a one-point game at 7-6, the Bruins in front. He's six foot ten, and he loved to shoot that ball way back behind his head. Very difficult to block. Next year, Terry Cummins will be an All-American. He'll take Mark Aguirre's place if he ends up going pro. Michael Holton guarded by Skip Dillard. Swinging around the outside to Darren Day. Last year he played guard. This year with the graduation of Kiki Vandeweghe, he's back and forward. Here's Holton. Might have traveled. No, three-second violation. Good defense by Skip Dillard coming out. He attacked him on the baseline side. Really think it was a traveling violation in addition to three seconds. Aguirre misses the turnaround. And the rebound is clutched by Michael Holton. Ahead to Rocket Rod Foster on the stutter step, finding Darren Day. Day dumping inside to Sanders. Sanders bouncing to Kenny Fields, who was fouled by Clyde Bradshaw. Baseline. Outstanding bounce pass that time, Billy. I think the UCLA kids inside pass the ball as well as anybody. Everybody has to remember last year, Darren Day played a guard position. Now he's playing the small forward. Really handles the ball well. They're in a 2-3 zone. You just watch uh, Clyde Bradshaw, Clyde the Glide, call the defense. Fields off the inbound, back to Sanders. Day floating baseline, trying to get it back to Sanders. Ball loose, scooped up by Day. Oh, wow. Day by Terry Cummings. Day again. In and out, and the rebound to Teddy Grubbs. That's what they need against Grubbs out of the box. Darren Day never knew that Cummings was behind him. Grubbs back from Cummings. Pretty play, and the ball has the lead at 8 to 7. What a give and go. Kenny Fields out high. Foster. It's like a jitterbug out there. Get Bradshaw really overplaying. There was the back door, and you have to do that often against Bradshaw to keep him honest. 
Holton up with the shot, a foul before he released it. Nice move, give a head and shoulders fake that time, going through the foul. Clyde Bradshaw, even in the zone defense, has a tendency to go ahead for the steal. You've got to take him back door to keep him honest. Then we're going to see, coming to baseline, Darren Day, excellent inside passing. Good hands in Eric Wire normally comes up with those kind of loose balls. Now here was a case, Day never realized Cummings was behind him. And there goes the great block. And after this missed shot, it went the other way. 15 minutes and 38 seconds to play. Timeout, DePaul 8, UCLA 7, back in a minute. Right turn, Clyde. That remarkable simian, Clyde. That gracious lady, Ruth Gordon. That lovely chanteuse, Sandra Locke. And best of all, that stalwart man of reason, Clint Eastwood. See Mr. Eastwood and the entire Every Which Way But Loose Truth in any which way you can, rate it PG. Now playing. Check newspaper for local listing. I'll tell you, I was a born soccer player. Did everything with my feet. Took out the rubbish with my feet, made the bed with my feet, drove my mum crazy. But I finally found something I enjoy doing with my hands, drinking light beer from Miller. Light has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling, but what really makes me happy is the taste. It's terrific. Now, my mum should be happy too. Look, mum, no feet. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Hey, guys, here's our genie screwdriver door opener. Where's the long box? That's the genie professionals use. This genie, we do. Motors attached. Snap together. Hang from ceiling. Plug in. Genie's extra touch of safety. Push once to open, twice to close. I'll have this done in a couple of hours. You can do it yourself. It's easy. With the Genie. See the Houston Oilers drive for their first Super Bowl appearance, led by the NFL's premier running back Earl Campbell, against Jim Plunkett and the tough Oakland Raiders tomorrow. Gentlemen, here's a look at DePaul's last basket. Well, Al, you've been talking about getting Teddy Grubbs out of the box. You remember he made the rebound down the far end. A good give-and-go situation with his buddy, Terry Cummings. Nice pass on the inside. Both of these clubs passed the ball extremely well inside. Remember yesterday at practice, Ray Meyer said they were overpassing a little bit. Today, they're keeping much better spacing. Boy, Larry Brown really broke out one of his best outfits for the national television appearance. I like the socks. Got to get a close-up on those, going with those beige socks. Larry Brown will be Al McGuire's guest on our halftime feature. The second-year coach at UCLA. They stay in the 2-3 zone after the out-of-bounds. Sanders misses the foul line. Oh, Good what a hand. McGuire skies for the rebound. Here comes Bradshaw. Hits Dillard on the drive. It's a walk. Terry walks. Outstanding pass. He puts me on that ball. Passing up there. He took one quick step before he went up to the basket. Good well, call. Clyde knew who he was throwing the ball to also. Skip Dillard with excellent hands and good concentration on the reception. You're going to see Mark Aguirre on that last rebound. What kind of hands this young fella has. Ooh. Back live, Darren Day misses the jumper. He is off his shooting touch here early. Bradshaw back for DePaul. Blue Demons by one at eight to seven. In the lane, Cummings with the dish to Bradshaw. Pass off by Terry Cummins. The old fashioned give and go. Bradshaw with two buckets for four points. There's the 2 3 zone since the timeout. The ball has stayed in it. Fields the pressure. Triple team. Bats it back out to Holt. Darren Day at the foul line. Nice Fields. play by Fields. Well, he's a tough young freshman. Another LA product that stayed at home. Said he wanted to go to UCLA because he admired Marcus Johnson, and his mom said, I better go there. So that's pretty, two pretty good reasons. Aguirre from 20. In and out. The rebound fought for it. DePaul's Cummings has it, and he hits the follow shot. And there's also a foul on the play. Well, they're playing hard out there. It's a great college basketball game. Here we see the shot from the outside by Mark Aguirre, who can go in and out. I've been surprised they hadn't gotten the ball low, but Cummings. Really powers inside, coming up with a potential three-pointer. It looks to me that the Paul strength is starting to show early. Uh, UCLA has to get this game in more to up and down the court, where obviously the Paul's trying to make it a 47-foot game rather than a 94-foot game. 
Cummings, a 70% free throw shooter. Cannot complete the three-point play. 14-14 to play first half. The ball 12, UCLA 9. Neither team has made a substitution yet. There's that 2-3 zone again. Actually, we have our first sub of the game. This is the freshman, Ralph Cracker Jack Jackson, wearing number three for UCLA. He came in while Cummings was at the line to shoot the free throw. Jackson, 20 feet away. Out high to Sanders. Jackson leads the team in assists. Foster with the bomb. That won't fall. The call a much stronger and bigger team inside than UCLA, and that's a big concern for Larry Brown. Cummings whirls, left hands it up, and it won't fall for him. Out of bounds to DePaul. Let's see if they still play man to man out of bounds this time. If they do, I think they'll take it around the strong side and bring it back to Mark Aguirre down low. Larry Brown bringing through it into the game, trying to get a little more size in that front line because they're really getting hurt on the second shots. Jackson's shoelace is open. They should call timeout. There's Aguirre. Aguirre muscles oh. it up, but can't hit it. They can't do it, Billy. I called that play because uh, man to man out of bounds is just uh, a dunk curtain. <laughs> I can't believe that he didn't get a foul there. You ever see the little screen? Just a little fake screen. Aguirre's got it inside. They cannot handle him down there low either. I'm surprised the Paul's not getting it down, letting him overpower it. The foul on Cummings. Who in the country can handle him? There aren't many. Foul on Cummings was his first team sport. Here's Rod Foster gliding along the baseline, and DePaul may be heading for team foul troubles. That is their fifth team foul. There you talk about attacking the fellow who has the ball down the baseline area. You've got to attack him over there to prevent a guy like Foster with his quickness from going baseline. When Grubbs went straight at him, he just took him. Foul on Grubbs is his first, but the team's fifth. Cliff Pruitt wearing number 34 in the ball game now for UCLA. 6'7", 185, and a sophomore. Dillard deflecting the inbound, but it comes to Foster. All by three at 12-9. The freshman Jackson with the ball at the point. Foster penetrating. Dumping inside to Sanders. Batted away. No foul called. It comes Good. to Darren Day who lays it in. Good position by Darren Day, but when the other fellow wants to take the shot, they really put an umbrella over. They're letting them play, coach. Yeah. It's a, it's a slow whistle today. Bradshaw with the behind-the-back dribble and almost losing it. And they've got a choir. He's not going to be content long to not put it up in there. Grubbs. Bang! That rebound, Al, that he had down the other end of the floor got him going since that time. Grubbs has been really dynamite. Well, what I did with my team for coaching all those years, I always got him going defensively. Then offense seems to automatically follow. Pruitt fires home his first shot. Again, a one-point game at 14-13. The Blue Demons with the lead and the ball. The clock reads 12 minutes and 10 seconds to play in the first half. Aguirre in the Cummings for the short turnaround. No good off the glass. Nice block out by Pruitt after the shot. Jackson, the freshman, to Rod Foster. I think Jackson has to take the shot from the top of the key now, Billy, to keep him honest. Back to Jackson. Foster fires the long one and misses it. And there's a rebounding foul. UCLA is going for the tough angle shot instead of coming back to the top of the key, which is a piece of cake. Foster can really get that. There's Larry Brown saying patience. That's exactly what he's talking about, Al. He wants a little better shot selection. Timeout with 11.46 to play in the first half. Chevy Citation. We said it was a whole new kind of compact car, and we proved it. We put Citation to work with its front-wheel drive, room for five, outstanding storage space, and impressive mileage. And now, as the best-selling front-wheel drive car in America, with Motor Trend's Car of the Year award, a half million owners, and six billion miles, there's no doubt about it. Chevy Citation. It works. A bright red fire truck, a blue calliope, a yellow moon, a pink balloon, a golden Dixie jamboree. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE TV brings you America's true colors, vivid and lifelike. And with GE's special VIR2 circuit, the color is automatically adjusted. Yes, America's true colors come through on GE. GE, we bring good things to life. Defense Larry Brown, a useful 40. Al, 
about does he employ the Dean Smith influence passing game, which he learned at North Carolina, or Johnny Wooden's high post offense? He goes to the high post offense. I think last year at the beginning of the season, he knew he was trying to do too many things with college kids. He was doing Dean Smith's run and jump defensively. Now he's settled in. He's his own man. He really got the monkey off his back when he ended up going to the finals um, in Indianapolis last year against Louisville. Boy, have we seen some coaches the past two weeks, Billy. Oh, oh there's Larry Brown's socks. We've oh. seen some clothes today. Oh, he really reached for those. Whoa. <laughs> I think he has to do it. Bobby Knight last week, Dean Smith with North Carolina, and today Ray Meyer, the legend, the dean of all the college coaches, and Larry Brown of UCLA. As we come back, Dillard for DePaul with the foul line jumper, which was blocked from behind by Rod Foster. Now Foster racing ahead of the pack to take the lead pass. DePaul regroups, Foster shot blocked, but a foul on Bradshaw. Got the ball with his hand, but must have got him with some body as well. Boy, all young players, if we get a replay of Foster making this catch, he really concentrated on making the catch first and then trying to run away with the ball. Well, what he first did, Billy, is block the shot by Dillard. That's right. Of course, he's an incredibly quick leaper off the floor. He doesn't mind going into the pack offensively and show Diller right there that he's got to respect him as a leaper on defense. DePaul is now up to six team fouls. He's shooting 1,000% from the foul line this year. He has now hit 12 for 12 this year. UCLA has made just 6 of 16 from the floor today, and they are a 50% plus shooting team. You know what? I, I think the ball is playing uh, excellent. I don't think UCLA is playing that good. The score's tied. Go ahead here. Well, Foster misses his first charity opportunity of the season. We remain deadlocked at 14. I think UCLA so far, though, Alice kept McGuire in the box, and that's going to be the key here. They're going to get the ball has to get him loose down inside. 18,000. He walks in center, and they watch McGuire get called for traveling. If you notice, as soon as McGuire touches the ball, that Sanders leaves his man and double teams on the baseline. What I think is happening, though, I think Mark is getting a little frustrated. He's on national television. He's the nation's number one player coming back. And I think when you have a player of that caliber, he needs to touch that ball often so he doesn't go in a drought. Well, give Larry Brown's defense a little bit uh, of the credit. Cummings with the steal. Bradshaw to lead the attack back the other way. Tied at 14 with 10.45. Grubbs the jumper. DePaul has the lead. He's a streak shooter, this Terry Grubbs. Teddy Grubbs. And he's out of the box, obviously. Now he has three passes, I believe. They've got to cut him off at the pass. He blew him out of there last year at UCLA. Ralph Cracker Jack Jackson. Bradshaw went for the steal, didn't get it. Here's Foster, picked up on a switch by Cummings. Got to be a mismatch somewhere. Let's see if they can find it. Darren Day swings to Sanders. Baseline short jump blocked by a player on the loose ball to Teddy Grubbs. Aguire, Dillard, back to Aguire. Cummings, backing in. Double teamed and a whistle. Three seconds. Ooh, I don't know. Three seconds. Sanders saying he was fouled down the other end. Larry Brown, longtime ABA star, former coach of the Denver Nuggets in the NBA in his second year at UCLA. Got a sincere suit on today. Three back, piece suit. Back to man to man is. Clip through it. Pull up, pop. Ties the game shot. at 16. Tough shot. I like the way Bradshaw controls the tempo of a ball game. You know, he, he runs it at his pace. 9.35 remaining. Aguire whirls inside and is fouled on the shot. Well, Aguire, Aguire did that time, which he hasn't been doing. He's now starting to move. He was just before turning and playing it off the uh, glass. He has to turn around and face his man, bring him to school, dance on his face, and go in there for a three-point play. There he is. Okay. Going to use his pivot. Comes back inside. He's got great hesitation and strength inside. I was surprised Day really had his hand up there. Did a decent job, even though he fouled him. Mark Aguirre comes into today's game averaging 21.6 and shooting 78% from the line. As a freshman, he averaged 24 a game. Last year, 26.8. And Ali said that last season's Western Regional upset loss to UCLA was the most embarrassing moment of his life. Well, he promised Ray Meyer, he promised himself, he knocked off 35 to 40 pounds. Uh, I, he looks a little drawn to me personally. I liked him with more of a, a romp on him. I like his behind wall. Full court pressure. 
UCLA breaks it. Jackson inside to Pruitt, and they get the bucket. They were patient against the full court pressure down here. This is a great ball handling team. Every guy in the squad can catch the ball on the run and give it up. Tie game at 18. Pruitt moving in for Cummings. No foul. He stepped out of bounds as he wrenched it away, says Booker Turner, the official. When you see a team pass the ball through pressure like that, they are well coached. Here's the steal, an attempted steal by Pruitt. Stepped out of bounds as he touched the ball. Aguirre, baseline jump. Grubbs the follow. Teddy Grubbs, perfect position. The ball back in front, 20 to 18. They've got Sanders on Grubbs. He's trying to help out so much on Aguirre that Grubbs is open every time a shot goes up and he's taking advantage of it. Sanders backs in and misses off the glass. The rebound to Cummings. Grubbs tried to go up, they slap it away. Holton has the steal, it's three on two. If they hurry, Day in the middle, lays it in. Brilliant fast break. Brilliant best fast break I've seen in a long time. Brilliant fast break. Everybody can run so well and catch it. And Al's coaching keys say, do not get into a track meet with UCLA. No way, it's all she wrote, Cap City. Tied at 20, 8.15 to play first half. This is a much better UCLA club than went to the Final Four last year. Cummings backs in, short jump, good. But they're still hammering away in close, been three feet, they're dominating the whole game. UCLA, of course, is winning when they get into the running ball game. UCLA again oh, down by a bucket, oh, they throw right. away. Bradshaw comes down, Dillard on his left, dishes it to him, and he lays it in. Absolutely nice. He held the ball so long, he made the defensive man create. Well, Larry Brown wants to tuck it over. There's a timeout at the Horizon Center in Rosemont, Illinois. Seven minutes and 39 seconds to play in the first half. Let's look at this bucket again. Here's that little hesitation you're talking about, Al. He just held up long enough to get the passing lane over to Skip Dillard. He made the big push off to go ahead and get the ball to start off with. He the ball man how to come at him. Ball 24, UCLA 20. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. So long, Here fellas. Hey, Jim, how you doing? I'm hot, cold, uh, thirsty. Call me a cab. Ten minutes, I have you back at the lodge. I can't make it. Ten minutes, I have you back at the lodge drinking a low and brown. I can make it. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Where would I be without you guys? Probably still out there in the snow somewhere. <laughs> If you're shopping for a new car, it's smart to talk to an Allstate agent before you buy. Before I buy? Why? Some cars get a break on insurance at Allstate. Oh, we'll be right back. Let's face it, all cars aren't built the same. At Allstate, some cost less to insure. Buy one of these and we'll pass the savings on to you. Up to 35% less than comprehensive. 35%? Uh, we'll be right back. Different rates for different cars. You're in good hands with Allstate. That's a promise for me, Judy Davis. On NBC Sports World, see the strength of World Cup powerlifting. Then power and tradition clash in the sport of sumo wrestling. Plus World Cannonball and Belly Flop Championships later today. The AFC playoffs underway tomorrow on NBC. It's NFL 80 with host Brian Gumbel at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. And a half hour later, the kickoff in Oakland. Jim Plunkett and the rejuvenated Raiders play host to a couple of old teammates. Kenny Stabler and Dave Casper along with the great Earl Campbell of Houston tomorrow on NBC. 7.39 left. 24-20. DePaul with the lead. UCLA, after calling the timeout, comes back with the ball, and here's Michael Holton back in. DePaul changes defenses. Second time they've done this after a timeout. This time it's back to the 2-3 zone. With Cummings coming up in the backside to play the man on the foul line. There he is, moving up with Pruitt. Darren Day in the lane to Pruitt, and there's a foul as he receives the pass, and that's going to put DePaul over the limit. Teddy Grubbs couldn't believe that Pruitt could hang in the air that long. He was laughing at himself because he was, thought he was in perfect position for the block. The follows on number 44, Skip Dillard, his third, team seven. Skip for Dillard team picking up his third Dennis foul, Moore, and now Dillard. Ray Meyer goes to the Dennis bench for the first time. One and Peaches Moore in the ball game, an excellent outside shooter. This is an interesting substitution here. 
He just hadn't played that much. He's only two for eight from the year. Didn't even practice much yesterday. And here he is in the ball game. Where's number 13, a 6'1 senior? Cliff Pruitt wears number 34, David Greenwood. Both come out of the same high school, Urban Day. Slight pressure up court, just tokenism. Grubbs breaking free, but missing the jumper. Now UCLA with a chance to tie. Look at Darren Day push that ball up the court for a man 6'6 or 6'7. Great play. Loose ball to DePaul with Dennis Moore picking it up, and they protect the two-point lead with 6.50 to play. Cummings. Turn around. Won't go. Holton with the ball. And again, the Bruins have a chance to tie it. Cummings slapped it away. And it's DePaul ball. It went off the leg of Holton. All right, Brown, like the club, when they don't have the fast break, to hold the ball up and get in some kind of offense. And what's happening to them, they, they're going for the break, pushing the ball up the court real well, and then they're very impatient in their half-court offense. It's awful hard to teach that, Billy. You, know, you got a team running at one second, then you, you want them to stop and set up. It's very difficult. Boy, Day is really preventing the ball from getting into a guard. There's the steal. Holton took it away from Bradshaw, and then a foul in the backcourt. Probably a wise foul by Cummings because UCLA had three going the other way. For the Bruins, and now Larry Brown goes back to his bench. Lineup replacing Day. And checking in is Dean Sears. Sears is a junior, 6'7, 205. Michael Holton will have one and the bonus. The ball over the limit, one and one for Holton. There you have Bernie Randolph in the ball game too. He's normally the first man in off the bench. Good score. Both teams trying to rest some people now. They're really moving up and down the floor. Randolph number 22 for DePaul. So for the Blue Demons, it's Cummings, Aguirre, Bradshaw, Moore, and Randolph. Now it's Sanders on Aguirre inside. This could be some matchup now. Yeah, well they get the ball in Aguirre. He doesn't have to fight anybody anymore. He goes right to work. See what's been happening. He's been fighting Cummings and Grubbs inside. Now when they take Rubs out and they move Cummings out to the corner, they're going to move Mark Aguirre down on the blocks. He'll be playing in the paint for the next four or five minutes. There he is, down inside. He's been spinning instead of baseline, going right in the lane. Now, also, Al, you had Sanders, who was over playing the weak side forward all the time. He's now hung up with Aguirre. Nobody came out to help him up like he was uh, doing before for Darren Day. Replacing Sanders. Sanders out and Darren Day back in. The lineup now for Larry Brown. Jackson and Holton are the guards. And up front, it's Sears, Pruitt, and Day. Aguirre at the line. He'll shoot two with 5.56 left. And DePaul in front by two, now make it three. I think UCLA might have a little jet lag. They played last week out in Tokyo. Played against a Japanese national team, also Temple. They only had one workout, which was yesterday morning at 7.30 in the morning. Jackson to the front court with the DePaul fans screaming for a traveling call. Darren Day gliding, and it's protected. Calling the charge. Randolph picked up the charge, but beautiful block coming across by Cummings. Well, when he goes into the game, he makes things happen. Bernard Randolph, he, he ended up winning the North, Car uh, North State and Texas game. North Texas State game for them. Aguirre fouled out at the end, and he moved in and made three or four big baskets, made four foul shots at the end. Won the game from down in Denton, Texas. It is not easy to win in Denton, Texas. All with a three-point lead. Aguirre backs in, turn around. Good. Now he has Darren Day on him. Sanders no longer in the ball game. Of course, Sears is just a rookie at playing this kind of defense, so look for Aguirre to break out. There's that 2-3 two, zone, 2-1-2 two, two almost, with Cummings coming up higher now. Long one by Holton. Taking the tough angle shot instead of shooting from the top of the key or the corner. Jackson has to put the ball up. Cracker Jack. Randolph to Cummings, out to Aguirre, 20-footer. Bang! Need a timeout, Larry. Getting a hot hand. This is the biggest lead for either club at 29-22 DePaul. That was a nice pass by Pruitt. They didn't take up the slack. Boy, listen to this crowd, a super crowd. DePaul has, not DePaul, Chicago has been a championship since 1963. That was Loyola College, also Chicago Bears. Time out, but their official game. 
minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half. This place is bedlam. We're coming right back. At one time, imported oil was no problem to America. Today, we import over 40% of our oil. If supplies are ever cut off again, it could affect your driving, your heating, your job. Texaco believes conservation must be increased, alternate energy sources developed, exploration and production stepped up, because none of us want to be caught over a barrel. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. 42! Oh, what a call! What a heartburn! How do you spell relief? Check the board, coach! R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Rolaid spells relief. Unbeatable relief. Relief Tums can't beat. Relief no other leading antacid can beat. For comic relief, I put on a frown. But for acid indigestion, I spell relief. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. Unbeatable. Rolaid spells relief. Unbeatable relief. From the people who brought you Dallas, Flamingo Road with Howard Duff, Stella Stevens, Mark Harmon, Morgan Fairchild, John Beck, and Christina Raines. Special preview Monday. Tonight on the NBC Nightly News, the latest film footage from Iran of the hostages delivering Christmas messages. Tonight on the NBC Nightly News. Bob Costas with Al McGuire and Billy Packer at the Horizon Center outside Chicago. And there is Ray Meyer, coach of the number one ranked DePaul Blue Demons. Some people in Kentucky may get upset. One poll says Kentucky, the other says DePaul. They have them flip-flop one and two. Well, the year will tell as it goes along. Ray Meyer has 15 grandchildren. Boy, the crowd really took away some of UCLA's game. They've been playing in Pauley Pavilion all year long. This is the first really road game that they've played at somebody else's court. Every, they played neutral against Temple. Everything else has been in Pauley. Heck of a lot of difference when you've got to come and play in a place like this. I think so far, it's so early in the game. I, I really think it's the muscle, the strength underneath that the ball has. But Grubbs in there, Cummings and Mark Aguirre. And the run right now came about, I believe, because Grubbs was taken out, allowing room for Aguirre to go down on the blocks. Michael Sanders couldn't quiet this crowd, and after his miss, UCLA fouls on the rebound, sending Bernard Randolph to the line. He is just a 53% free throw shooter. <laughs> Buddy gets the bonus. He didn't play last year because the coach said he didn't play defense or rebound. This year he started to play defense and rebound. He's their sixth man. He comes off the bench real quick. Can substitute for the baseline, anyone on the baseline. No, he came late for practice the other day. Oh, yeah. Ray Meyer was telling us that he made him run, and Ray went upstairs and said, when I come back down, you can stop running. But Ray forgot about him, and he made him run for two hours and 20 minutes. DePaul by nine, and they press in the backcourt. UCLA has got to get a basket here. Tony Anderson has just come in, is trapped. But there's a DePaul foul. They were in danger of getting the 10-second violation. But they luck out as DePaul comes up with the foul. Great call by DePaul that time, throwing a surprise pressure on them. If they get this ball right here, I would believe the game might be blown out right there. They move it up to 11-point lead and have them completely disorganized. What they need now is a basket down this end, or at least make these two foul shots. Jackson has to shoot the top of the key against that 2-3 zone. Well, Tony Anderson just came in. Larry Brown going to that bench early. Anderson into the ball game now, trying to get loose on that line. Both teams are over the foul limit. It's a one and one for junior Tony Anderson. 4.08 to play. Four for six from the line this year. He'll have the bonus. That was a big foul shot. That was needed. That was really needed. You know, a little as, cold water on the crowd. As great as this UCLA club is, they've got to look to that Pac-10 this year. Somebody's going to be a very good third place finishing team out there with Arizona State and Oregon State also in the league. One of two for Anderson. The next game for UCLA will be the start of the conference season after the first of the year at home against Washington. DePaul's next game against Georgetown. Zone defense right here. Mark McGuire finding out, hey, do we want to play against the zone with 3.49 to go? Are we going to make them come out and take us man to man? They're going zone now. They won't move in. Mark Eaton, he's a seven foot three guy. He's coming over towards the scorer's table now. When they go to zone, they go to his strength underneath. Now, they have been told they've got to come out to play. Now, that doesn't mean they have to go man to man. Beautiful move by Bradshaw. The block is on UCLA. Bradshaw's coming to the foul line. A lot of people don't realize that, but when you, 
when the official tells you you must come out to play, it doesn't mean that we'll see Bradshaw's move down the lane. Here he comes, moving over, stuck out the leg. Very cheap foul, bad one for Sanders to pick up because you need him later in the ball game. There's a default fan, he's kind of happy. But you know, they were back in the zone. over then, Billy. I don't, he wasn't doing anything to hurt the guy. No, 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 no. What I'm saying, it was a cheap kind of foul for him to get. He needs to be in the defense. But they did not have to come out of the zone there. They just had to put pressure on the offense on the outside. Bradshaw with one more coming. Three and a half minutes to play. DePaul's lead back to nine at 32-23. In comes the Empire State Building with muscles. Here he comes. Seven foot three. 23 years of age, is out of a junior college. What's the name of that junior college, Bob? Baby? Westminster? No. Westminster is his high school. His, uh, his junior college was Cypress Junior College. It's just like the tree. 33, 23, DePaul with a double figure lead, and UCLA back with the ball. Ooh. Almost a steal. Foster comes up with it for the Bruins. What? DePaul taking a lot of chances now. Bradshaw going ahead in the, in the zone defense. He'll gamble now, particularly with this lead, trying to go for the big steal. There he goes, gets his hand on one. Eaton posting up inside. Let's see if they try to get the ball to him. He's 7-3 and 270. They played it. Pushed off. Coming, right. battered it away. Eaton did push off. Alan Billy, as you know, today will be picking a player to receive the MVP of the game scholarship award from Chevrolet. And obviously, we won't know who that will be until late in the ballgame. There are a number of candidates already. Now DePaul with an opportunity to build their lead to a dozen. They're up by 10, and Cummings has a one and one Larry Brown trying to get on the officials a little bit, trying to do anything he can to get that little edge to his ball club. Now they stand a chance to really be hurting here at halftime. Normally, when games are played in the Midwest, they play a little bit rougher than I've played on either coast. I think that tendency came from years ago from the Big Ten, from football, where a lot of the referees years ago, I'm going back 25, 30 years ago, were Big Ten officials. Ducky football. Drake sitting over there with his, chewing his fingernails off, Al. He's been there for 57 years, been part of UCLA. There's the press again by DePaul. It was a surprise factor before. It works. They got a steal. More the jumper. They are up by 14 points at 37-23. Another timeout. The game will be over. I think Larry needs to get his starters back in the ballgame. He's got four starters sitting on the bench. Call a timeout. Get it up. Readjust. Settle down. No use saving your timeout to the end of the game. Been, here comes some starters back in there. Darren Day coming back in the ball game. Only Rod Foster was on the court at that time. They let the ball game get away from him a little bit. See, the big guy was leaving, not giving any help under the pressure. He was going down court. Now they're back to man to man. Eaten out of the ball game. Wires got it. 16 points to Paul Lane. Bradshaw the assist. Aguirre the bucket. 39-23 with 2.38 to play in the half. Paul stays so. Jackson missing, Day rebounding, and breaking a long drought for UCLA. We'll put pressure up court now. They've got to create more play. Enough the pressure this fellow right here, Bradshaw. It seems like he's been around for 100 years, really knows the game. Look out. Aguirre again. Good again. Hey, tattoos on your face, that guy. It's unbelievable when he gets the hot hand. He's a scoring machine. Austin. Cliff Pruitt. Day with the follow shot, and Darren nice. Day has hit two buckets in a row now for UCLA. See, they got to get their quickness in, Bill. When they have a move underneath there, UCLA can answer even in the rebounding end. But offense to be down here, they can't rebound with them because the ball is setting up their strength inside. Cummings, foul line jumper. No, no, not a, not a good shot. Bad shot selection at that time of the game. Pruitt just got a piece of it. Larry Brown really upset with the call. I'm sure Ray Meyer wants to talk to uh, both Bradshaw and Peaches more because he wants that ball down inside to acquire the rest of the half. A minute 36 to go. They just can't stop it. Terry Cummings will have two shots. Larry Brown doesn't believe it. Cummings is awarded a straight two here. He's a 70% free throw shooter. I don't, I didn't see that foul either. Touch. 
And you sure don't want a guy fouling somebody who's taking a shot that you really would like him to put up at that point. A couple of Allen Billy's relatives peering through the sign. <laughs> I'm leaving Billy alone this year. <laughs> I did the call with him yesterday. He wanted to stop and try to melt the silo. <laughs> I understand you told him you knew how to find Alumni Hall, and five hours later you were there. Cliff Pruitt. There they Full court zone pressure drops back into his zone. Foster won't fall. No, no, no. It's offensive on UCLA. Billy, I see a look of disbelief on your face. Well, I thought that Foster had, he is so quick. He had the angle right here. We'll see it. I don't know. Let's watch Foster coming through there. He had the angle. I really can't see a charging call on that play. He is so quick. Very difficult to be planted waiting on him in the lane. Mark McGuire. The basket had it fallen. Would have counted. Yeah, he in that had situation. to the ball. McGuire shooting one and one. Rod Foster can put his head down and run 100 miles an hour and knock, knock Mark McGuire out of the way. <laughs> McGuire is a 78% free throw shooter. There's that Mark zone press again. It's, it's very effective. Mark McGuire has 15 points, and DePaul is up by 18 at 45-27. Pruitt, the turnaround. McGuire, the rebound, with a minute two to play. Whoop, whoop, got away from him. But he gets the ball stick him on his hand. Playing real hard. You know, the practice yesterday, Billy, how intense Mark Aguirre was. Well, since his freshman year, it's been a 180-degree turnaround for Aguirre as far as his intense, competitive nature, both in practice and in the game. It really shows up. He's got outstanding leadership qualities now for this team. Okay, UCLA, let's get a basket here. Let's get back in the ball game. Steady it down. Less than a minute, 59 seconds. Jackson from 20. Jackson from 20 should have been shooting there for the last 10 minutes. That is his first basket out. There's well, the, he only took one of the shot, which is a hang on. It's a 2-2-1 two, two, pressure. Bradshaw sees it, gets it up well. Uh, Ray will look for one and one foul here. Four along the baseline. 26 seconds. You know who wants to handle it here yep. with about 12. Here he goes. He's posting up low. Straight to the other side, Bradshaw. Here it goes in. There it's in. There it's it is. Nice Beautiful. pass. Out of sight. Out of sight. Dynamite. Dynamite. They got five seconds to get a shot off. Foster, two seconds, beats the buzzer, misses the shot. And that is the end of the first half. And what a half for the DePaul Blue Demons. The pass underneath we'll see that beautiful play. Everybody, including uh, ourselves, looking for Aguirre to do something with the ball. And he, just, he gave it off beautifully. The halftime score, DePaul 47, UCLA 29, back in just a minute. Halftime activities coming up. A look at the nation's top ten and an Al McGuire interview with Larry Brown. All that and more right after this word from your local stations. The loneliest runner, his mother flaunted his shame to the world, but his attempt to protect his secret drove him to victory. Brian Keith, Lance Kerwin, and Michael Landon star Saturday. Legalized gambling, from the Las Vegas Strip to Atlantic City's boardwalk. Is it a financial cure for cities? Is it an addiction for the masses? An NBC white paper, Saturday. Back at the Horizon Center in Rosemont, Illinois, Bob Costas along with Al McGuire. And Al, a while ago you talked with Larry Brown. He was happier then than he is now. Well, he has some problems. I think they'll adjust, put full court pressure on. But uh, I enjoyed this interview with Larry. I think the people will enjoy it. Let's take a look at it. Three years ago with Dick Enberg, Coach, I, uh, I said that UCLA would not win another NCAA championship in this century. And I remember Dick Enberg's uh, facial reaction because he's from the coast. Uh, are they spoiled out here? Well, I, uh, I think they've learned to uh, 
or come to expect to win. Um, you know, I consider, I was at North Carolina, we won um, two national championships and the school was founded in 1787, I think. Um, UCLA's won 39 national championships in all sports since the 60s. Um, Coach Wooden won 10 in 12 years, so I think they're all surprised and all spoiled. Going back to which started out last year's season as a Dunkirk, I thought, and ended up a Camelot, a Shangri-La. How about giving me some reflections on your first year as a head coach in college basketball? Well, that was an experience. Um, you know, we were struggling. We were eight and six, and uh, I had doubts about whether I was doing it right or not. Um, but I really loved being with the kids from two to six, you know, at practice every day. It was really kind of special. And then when I saw them come around, when I saw the kids um, start to understand, uh, start to make great plays in the clutch, um, start to feel some self-esteem, it was really special. I, uh, I got so much more out of this season than I think anybody else could. When you went to the Final Four, Larry, and here you are, there, there are coaches there that many, many years never get to it. What were your feelings? First, I felt like I was an intruder. I remember we warmed up the first day out. You know, uh, the day before is probably the most exciting day, I think. And I'm warming up, and I look over, and there's Ray Myers, Dean Smith, and Bobby Knight, three of the greatest coaches of all times, and people that have done so much for the game. And I realized, hey, they only won one national championship between the three. And, and I went right to the kids, and I said, hey, let's not let this opportunity slip, because you are so special for being here. They truly expected that because they're at UCLA, because they had an opportunity to go to this school, they follow Walt and they follow Al Cinder, they follow Wooden, that we were going to win it all. You've, um, you've taken saddle shoes and put them back in style. And uh, I, I don't know how you did it, but it's, um, they've been around a while. Has any um, manufacturer came to you for the model? No, everybody thinks they're white, Alan. Only used car salesmen wear white shoes. But this is my last hurrah with this pair. I'm gonna, I'm gonna borrow your pair if um, you oh, have no, success. It, it's a tradition now. You gotta, you gotta go out there with them. Even when you were going through a drought at the top of last year, Larry, I thought the student body was behind you. I think that your volatile moves on the bench create a love affair with the student body. Well, I was different from the other coaches. Um, and I think they felt sorry for me, like you did and so many other people. We were struggling, and I tried to make them feel they were part of the team and they could have an effect on us winning, and um, they got behind me. Uh, the amazing thing, the thing, first time I really felt I belonged at UCLA, we needed to beat Washington at home, and I started the seniors, and we ended up losing the game in the last second, and uh, I thought that was... Uh, us really losing a chance to go to the NCAAs. And after the game, they called me out. And this is after a loss in Pauly. And at that moment, I, I kind of felt, well, maybe they understood that I cared about them and I cared about the kids. And uh, from that time on, I think there's been a much better relationship between me and the kids. Supposedly leaving the big dollars at Denver, the NBA, what was the, the reason? Well, I wasn't very happy. Um, my wife and I didn't feel very comfortable. I didn't feel like I was doing a very good job. Um, In what way? Well, the team wasn't playing like a team I wanted them to be. And uh, when I left it, I was a little afraid. I didn't know what would happen, but um, I really feel good about the decision. I think Denver's benefited by it, and I, I really think I have. If you ever did leave basketball, Larry, and what other profession would you consider? I know a little... Jewish guy from Brooklyn, and came a long way. Here we are out in Westwood. I'd probably try and switch seats with you, Al. <laughs> I really felt I belonged at UCLA. We needed to beat Washington at home, and I started the seniors, and we ended up losing the game in the last second. And uh, I thought that was uh, us really losing a chance to go to the NCAAs. And after the game, they called me out. And this is after a loss in Pauly. And at that moment, I, I kind of felt, well, maybe they understood that I cared about them and I cared about the kids. And uh, from that time on, I think there's been a much better relationship between me and the kids. Supposedly leaving the big dollars at Denver, the NBA, what was the, the reason? Well, I wasn't very happy. Um, my wife and I didn't feel very comfortable. I didn't feel like I was doing a very good job. Um, In what way? Well... The team wasn't playing like a team I wanted them to be. And uh, when I left it, I was a little afraid. I didn't know what 
would happen, but um, I really feel good about the decision. I think Denver's benefited by it, and I, I really think I have. If you ever did leave basketball, Larry, and what other profession would you consider? I know a little Jewish guy from Brooklyn came a long way. Here we are out in Westwood. I'd probably try and switch seats with you, Al. <laughs> I, uh, but I have a wealthy mother. <laughs> well, my wife's going to go to work. Okay. Uh, but I, uh, I don't know anything else I could do. You know, I, I love the game. All uh, the coaches I, I played for had a great effect on my life. And um, it, it's special. I wanted to grow up to be like Ray Myers. And right now, Al, he'd rather be Ray Meyer than anybody, considering the scoreboard. Well, he's down by 18 points. It took 20 minutes to get that far down. He got 20 minutes to make it up. All they have to do is be patient, set up when they come over court. We'll be back with Al McGuire and Billy Packer here in Chicago in just a moment. Economy cars. There sure are a lot of them around. But check out their sticker prices, and many don't seem quite so economical anymore. Fortunately, Chevy Chevette isn't like most economy cars. Because not only does Chevette offer good gas mileage, like this, it also offers you a low Chevy price, like this. So why buy an economy car that just saves you gas when you can buy a Chevy Chevette, best-selling small car in America, and one top son of a gun. Back at the Horizon Center, and let's take a look at the nation's top ten, and we'll see both the clubs we're watching today featured near the very top. Ray Myers' DePaul Blue Demons, who are off to an 8-0 start, were ranked number one at the start of the week as they go after victory number nine. UCLA under Larry Brown off to a 6-0 beginning to their season, and their six victories include a win at Pauley Pavilion in big fashion over Notre Dame. DePaul number one, Kentucky number two, Al. Well, a lot of t people think that Kentucky should be number one. I believe that Kentucky does not have the maturity of a DePaul. That's why I picked DePaul very early in the season. But the club to watch is the sleeper of all sleepers. The best kept secret in basketball, Oregon State. Watch them. They're good. They're keepers. UCLA has got to meet them twice with Johnson, the big center, and with Bloom and Radford, the guards. They will cause trouble. There's the rest of that top ten as you look at it. Several clubs from the ACC as well represented. There's a big show coming up on Sports World. Let's take a look at it. Following today's UCLA DePaul game, coming up on NBC Sports World, a hearty mixture of holiday cheer. Sports World brings to hearth and home the ancient ceremonial display of strength and agility, the Japan special sumo wrestling from Tokyo. And then keeping the boisterous spirit with muscle and might, U.S. lifters take on the brawny British in the World Cup of Powerlifting from London, England. And then it's icicles and motorcycles as Sports World takes a trip to Kalinin in the Soviet Union for the World Ice Speedway Motorcycle Championships. And then Sports World continues with our holiday on ice with the International Barrel Jumping Classic. Jumpers from Canada and the U.S. aim their trajectory for that mystical 17th barrel. Only two men in history have cleared it. And then rounding out our holiday package, we present a belly and board bouncing frolic. It's the World Belly Flop and Cannonball Championship plus other holiday surprises that's immediately following today's game on NBC Sports World. Coach Myers telling his team in the locker room right now, watch for the full court pressure, don't get in a foul situation, and work for your shots, work against the clock. Right back after these words. We'll return to college basketball after these messages from your local station. NBC's college basketball is brought to you by Texaco, with over 66,000 employees doing their best at their jobs to keep your trust. By Anheuser-Busch Incorporated St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob Beer. Weekends were made for Michelob. And by Chevrolet and your Chevrolet dealers from coast to coast. Wally Kurgen, Engineering Model Shop. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. In our new J-Car, the station wagon and the sedan have a quarter panel and side frame and one stamping. The model maker has to create this in wood. The automobile is checked against this model. The customer will notice that the doors fit better, there's less wind noise, and less rattles. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. 
Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, California style. In California, they don't follow trends, they set them. So people out here don't wait for the weekend to have a Michelob. They enjoy that smooth and mellow Michelob taste whenever and wherever they please. Put a little weekend in your week. Yeah. RCA wants you to see the right color. Does your television automatically capture all these subtle shades of blue in this ocean of color? Color Track 1981 can. With RCA's exclusive detail processor, Color Track separates detail from color, refines it, then locks the right color on track. Even colors only subtle shades apart. Color Track 1981. RCA is making television better and better. Bob Costas with Al McGuire and Billy Packer. Bill, the halftime stats. Well, it's kind of interesting to see that the, the patience that UCLA did not show really cost them. They were shooting 38%, and DePaul 62%. Al, you pointed out so well that DePaul getting a lot of easy shots inside. The foul shooting, uh, of course, quite a difference right there. Rebounding even. That surprised me somewhat. And, of course, UCLA has turned the ball over, particularly during that stretch against the full-court press. One of the reasons the rebounds even, Billy, is that the Paul's making most well, of their well, shots. Yeah, they don't need any offensive rebounds. Yeah, approximately 63%. Aguirre is the high man of the game with 15. Cummings has 10. Grubbs has 8. For UCLA, Darren Day is the only man in double figures. He has 11. Pruitt came off the bench to score 8. Well, that Teddy Grubbs has excellent timing on that opening tap. With an 18-point lead, DePaul has the ball after the second-half tip. Aguirre, guarded by Darren Day, out to Teddy Grubbs. Here's coming. Whirling for the jump. Good. They are up by 20. Billy, you're looking to me like he walks on that. Well, he really holds that ball behind his head. Impossible to block it. There was another case. Now with Sanders in the ball game, where Grubb's the guy that's going to be open because Sanders really looking out to help out on Aguirre. Here's DePaul in the zone. The jumper outside is no good. They oh, save it in, but it comes right to Kenny Fields. That's going to be goaltending. I don't know, Bob, the people understand when I say they're taking a tough angle shot against the zones. And here we're going to see right now, Grubb's going to take that ball. I mean, Cummings going to take that ball. There's that twist, holding the ball behind his head off the glass beautifully. That was a bad pass down the other end of the court. Throwing the ball right under the other team's basket. Grubb's from Bradshaw misses. Aguirre trying to follow. They strip him of the ball. UCLA with Foster rocketing down for the layup. Field goal, Rod Foster. Ball cannot get into a track meet. They'll come right back into this ball game. That was Joey Meyer with the glasses you saw seated next to his father, Ray Meyer. Joey Meyer will be the next head coach at DePaul when Ray steps down. Now Grubbs is wide open. There he is. The reason he's wide open is Sanders is leaving him completely, trying to double up on Aguirre. Offensive foul on Rod Foster. Oh, Larry's up on that one. Well, he's trying to get control here early. He felt that he didn't get the best part of the officiating in the first half. Fouls, of course, 13, uh, 15 to 8. He's trying to keep control. Is staring at a 16-point deficit at 49 to 33 with 18.35 left in the ballgame. Dillard, Bradshaw, Grubbs, Cummings, and Aguirre. This is Dillard. Into Aguirre. Won't fall for him. Beautiful rebound by Fields. Foster. Holton. Back to Foster, walk. double pumps and hits. I think the ball has to recognize right away what UCLA is doing with Sanders. Now, Grubbs is going to be wide open if they'll just feed the ball to Aguirre because Sanders is going to double with Day. Foster, who had only one point in the first half, has hit two straight buckets for UCLA. Here's Cummings taking it inside and missing. And Sanders now, was there. Again, you see that Grubbs is not even being guarded. The blow coming toward UCLA. A basket here would cut it to 12. Well, they're in a little bit of a zone there now. They need a basket. Take it from the top of the key. Day gets it into Fields. Tough luck on the shot. Sanders there for the follow. Can't get it down. One more. That's good. Cummings fell asleep that time. Didn't react quick enough. Ray Myers wants a timeout. Beautiful call. Beautiful call. They're right back in the ball game. 12 points. So UCLA makes a move. We've got plenty of time left. 17 minutes and 32 seconds to play in the ball game and a 12-point Blue Demon lead. Texaco's Metropolitan Opera broadcasts the longest-running sponsored program in radio history. 
Bringing opera to people who can't get to the opera. Can you drive that well? Texaco, your ticket to the opera for over 40 years. They wanted you to build bridges over rivers, but you had other plans. Your car is the strikingly new 1981 Monte Carlo with the economy of a responsive V6 and fresh, clean, sharply sculpted lines. And you'll choose it because you're proud of who you are. You and Monte Carlo. 1981 Monte Carlo. A matter of personal pride from Chevrolet. There go your auto insurance rates because most insurers won't forgive even one accident that's your fault. But Kemper will. Count on the cavalry. If you've been with Kemper through five years of safe driving, your first at-fault accident won't mean a rate increase. To get first accident forgiveness, call out the cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. On NBC Sports World, see the strength of World Cup powerlifting, then power and tradition clash in the sport of sumo wrestling, plus World Ice Speedway Motorcycle Championships later today. Later tonight on NBC's Nightly News, the latest film from the round of the hostages delivering Christmas messages tonight on the NBC Nightly News. During the timeout, we listened in on Larry Brown's huddle. Al, he told his players, we're back in it. Go slow, plenty of time. Don't have to make it all up at once. Be patient. The idea when you're down 18 at halftime, at the 10-minute mark, to be down below 10. You didn't make a run for the last three or four minutes in the game. You can only score two points at a time. Grubbs misses the baseline jumper. Cummins follows it in, building the Paul's lead to 14 points. You're going to see what... break that time, Billy. Yeah, you can see what happens, though, when Grubbs takes a shot. He's not guarded, and everything else breaks down in the UCLA defense. Bob Costas with Al McGuire and Billy Packer. Darren Day's shot is blocked by Aguirre. It comes into the hands of Sanders, who forces one up no good. Ooh, it feels get up that time. Holton has the shot at the top of the key, too, but he's not taking him. This is Holton with the ball. 16.45 left in the game. The ball 51, UCLA 37. There's Holton's shot. He's got to take that. Automatic. It's like a layup from up there. I don't know why all teams don't take the cupcake shot at the top of the key against zones. The ball will stay in the zone until it gets down to about six points. Now you're UCLA say make them prove they can hit the outside shot against the zone. Yeah, make them prove that they can hit the outside shot from the angle. Overplay the dead shots, which is the top of the key and uh, uh, out in the corner. The angle shot has a lot of indecision. You don't know whether to play the rim or the backboard. Coming. Pretty versatile. He can take that turnaround jumper going clockwise or counterclockwise. We'll see if Holton realizes again he's got the shot. UCLA is down by 14. And Aguirre comes up with the steal. Right there, Clyde calling the offense. He's really a pro. He's out in New Jersey. There's only two kids in the team that are outside the Chicago area. They're both from New Jersey. Coming to go and hit it. Holton back with Fields on his right. Holton all the way. And the rebound to Aguirre. He needed one more dribble that time, though. He committed himself too soon. Aguirre did a good job backing up defensively. Boy, he has a beautiful set of hands when he goes up there. He and Buck Williams have two of the best set of hands in the United States. Buck Williams, of course, the center for Maryland. Aguirre throws it away, trying to hit Teddy Grove. Buck Williams is a player. <laughs> That's all I can say. Okay, to down 14. Big basket here. 15, 25 left as DePaul settles back in the zone. Foster fires. Well, he has an unorthodox looking shot, but he usually hits a lot better than he is today. Force him a little. Bradshaw comes wheeling back. Clyde Bradshaw finds Dillard. Good. Dillard's the unsung hero of this club. He's a tremendous complimentary guard. He can fill it up from outside. He went to a junior college in Casper, Wyoming. Holton to Darren Day. Day came into this game hitting 72 percent from the field. He is way off the mark. Ball baseline are getting mean. That's two. 
Nice help by Darren Day, but excellent play. Now that they're getting grubs in the offense, Cummings wide open inside. Here we see good play by Darren Day to come down there to stop the automatic dunk. Can't afford to have one more on Day because he not only is doing a good job offensively against Terry the press, Cummings, they really need him. Two shots. Well, he had a very uh, bad injury to his hand early in the season, Billy. You had that game, didn't you, out in Springfield? Yep. Jammed it up against the rim in practice. He played in the game, played very well. In that ball game, DePaul's maturity really uh, overcame the Louisville club, and that's probably one of the big stories of the year, trying to figure out how Louisville's uh, one in five. Well, they'll do okay. I still think they'll win the Metro and um, be on top of the game come tournament time. Here's a nice deuce. pass. Darren Day shot is blocked. Ooh, God, is that Cummings fast. Wow, quick, I should say. One extra little head fake, and second time today, Day didn't realize Cummings was on the move. This is a nice pass by Jackson. Watch him Probably should have gone right up with it. Here he comes, times it beautifully, gets a piece. Foul took place on the rebound. Clyde Bradshaw picked it up. But it's simply UCLA ball out of bounds instead of what seemed like a certain basket. Cracker Jack Jackson. He misses from 20. The follow falls in. It will count at a foul on Grubbs. And I think Grubbs had as much to do with the ball going in the basket as Fields did. Well, Fields is another fella. Powerful, good leaper inside. You see Jackson putting it up in that hole right at the top of the key that's been available. Here's Fields timing it well, going up. Also got a piece of the rim right there that probably should have been a technical. That could have been a five-point play. Fields at the line. So far this year, he has hit just 50%. Grubbs out, and Bernard Randolph in for DePaul. Cummings with a rebound. No three-point play, 56-41, DePaul by 15. Now remember what this did in the first half. With Randolph staying outside, it allowed Aguirre to be loose inside. We're back into Aguirre now. Dance with the guy that took you to the dance. Aguirre finding Bradshaw. Bradshaw stuffed by Sanders, but a foul on Mike Sanders. Oh, a good block by Sanders. I think he was on the ball on that one. Clyde Bradshaw very seldom gets caught underneath the basket like this. A little give-and-go action. Here he is. Nice pass, good catch. Watch Sanders coming up. Boy, he's got all ball there. You know, frequently, Al, we hear about the rebounding and, of course, the scoring talents of Mark Aguirre, but he's a fine passer, too. He's unbelievable. He has the whole package. I mean, obviously, he could have been, the, I guess, the number one or the number two draft choice in the NBA last year. He decided to come back to the pool. He said he has a deep love for uh, Ray Meyer, and he wants to prove that they can go all the way this year. Bradshaw, 79% at the line, swishes this one. But if I was playing against the ball and I was coaching, this is the man that I would cut off. You cut off the head, the body dies, and this is the, this is the leader right there. He's the guy that makes things happen. He's the guy that runs the rhythm. Here's that press again, and with Day in the ball game, he handles the press much better. Whoop, he there he fouled. goes again. <laughs> Bradshaw <laughs> taking all kinds of chances. Was taking all kinds of chances. He has quick hands. Now with this kind of lead, he can afford to take those chances. Larry Brown probably going crazy over there. Going to be a timeout called on the floor. Here we see the play. Mark Aguirre probably is one of the most powerful dunkers in the country. Pruitt almost took his head off. He still makes the play. Here we'll see it. He knew where he was going with his little, ball. Little showboat right there. Yep, one-hander. That's all she wrote. 13 minutes and 49 seconds to play in the game. That was Aguirre's first basket of the second half. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. The people who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours a happy and safe holiday season. Benito Cantu, power steering pump assembly operator. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. It makes you really proud to be number one. I feel that GM produces the best power steering pump in the world. Some are exported to Japan, some are exported to England. 
they do uh, realize the quality and reliability of uh, our products. The more uh, GM exports, the more uh, U.S. jobs. General Motors, people building transportation to serve people. Well, Al, Clyde Bradshaw, you said the leader is the guy that created the interception the other end, and here comes, oh, there's your old French pastry right there, and watch this. I don't like that. This is what I like right here. Number He's saying, one. hey, we're number one, we're paying the price. But this game is not over. Almost 14 minutes left, 19 point spread. UCLA needs a run, needs a run of, uh, of about six points. Put them back in the game, keep the, the crowd quiet. This uh, Horizon Arena here looks like a Zeppelin hangar. Aguirre right now is out of the Nepal lineup following the timeout. Dillard, Bradshaw, Randolph, Cummings, and Grubbs for Ray Meyer. Cliff Pruitt. And it's staying in that zone with the lead. It just allowed it. Force UCLA to put it up from outside. Darren Day has a Bradshaw away. again. Oh. Quick. Everyone's so quick today. Well, there's a case where Bradshaw, I'm sure, is telling Randolph right now, hey, look, we made the play. Get a hold of the ball. Give it back to me, and I'll bring it up the court. Wire taking a little rest. And it will be just that. A very brief breather for him. He'll be back in. You can bet on it. Here's Darren Day. Jackson, Holton, Jackson, Pruitt, Day, and Fields right now for Larry Brown. Clyde Bradshaw really not even playing the zone. He's playing the steal right now. Watch him wander around. Fields alone. The basket counts, and there's a foul on the play. Well, Bernard Randolph went at him, made a good effort. Three-point play could hurt. Good play. Everybody kind of fell asleep a little bit, and that's what happens. Randolph went up very well against Fields. Fields lost a lot of weight, too. He was uh, carrying about 25 more pounds in that last point as a high school player. And Dwyer comes in, Grubbs going out. Gray figured that's long enough. They got two points. Went back in his star, Mark Aguirre. Kenny Fields can bring UCLA within 16 if he hits his 11th point, which he can't do. The rebound to Aguirre. You know, he's on the left side there, Bill. Everything that comes that side, he kind of vacuums up. Well, you notice how he used his body so well to gain position on the rebound. Aguirre with the turnaround. 19 points for Mark Aguirre. See who's not in the game now, Bob. Sanders is not in the game. Whenever he's not there, nobody helps out. And Aguirre feels that he's one-on-one -on -one coverage and just takes there and day. This is Darren Day into the lane for Pruitt. Made him change his shot. Ball out of bounds, and it will belong to UCLA. Paul has UCLA playing their game. They stood up at you know, the 47 feet to play in a half-court game. Every now and then, UCLA is breaking out with a break, but they can't get enough of it. Well, there we are. There's the uh, Zeppelin hanger. About 18,000 here. This is the first season for DePaul in this big building. Last year at Alumni Hall, they turned thousands and thousands away every night in their great season. They have won 45 consecutive home games, 42 of them at Alumni Hall, three of them this year here. They go for number four, and they have the big lead. Jackson hits for UCLA, bringing them to within 17 at 62-45. Jackson playing a lot more time, now bat matched up with Holton in the backcourt. Very good playmaker, having a hard time against the veterans today. Aguirre. Not there. That was not a good shot at no. that time. No, it was not there. You got a 17-point lead. What happens, the clock becomes more your opponent now than the than UCLA. And Ray Meyer play, plays no favorites. He got Mark Aguirre off on the sideline and said that was not the shot to take. You think he might have said, I don't think that was the shot to take. <laughs> <laughs> On the inbound, Bernard Randolph, who has made a contribution here off the bench, gets the bucket for DePaul. The foul prior to that shot, by the way, was on Darren Day. He's not get, now got four for UCLA. This is Day. There's Bradshaw going for the steal. I think if a lot of people scout the ball they've got to take advantage of that he's a fellow that when they play that zone he's, he's looking for the steal you can fill in behind him that's his fourth Bradshaw goes out and of course he also is smart enough to realize not to pick up those cheap fouls in a ball game that wouldn't be this uh, big a margin for their uh, victory Dennis Moore in to replace Bradshaw Moore number 13 Pruitt from day Holton. Jackson the 20 footer Rebounding foul coming up. Yep. Randolph was on his back. No doubt about it. 
for the Bruins. Randolph shown you he can get up in the air, though, listed at 6'5", maybe 6'4". But he can get in the air, another Chicago boy. Westinghouse High School. Kenny Fields out of the corner. Danger. They go for the steal, they get the steal. Dillard ahead to Randolph. Randolph whirling and hitting. No basket, fouled before he went up. That's right, they take the basket away. The clock stops with 11.29 left. DePaul's lead is 19, here it is. Here we see the pass, excellent pass ahead. Randolph concentrates. Jackson comes over, he got him. His first team fifth. Of course, that was a good foul because it took away the basket. Really get the ball out of bounds on the sidelines. 15 foul. Peaches Moore back in the ball game. Gave some good uh, mature play in the first half. Mark Aguirre. Game's high man with 19 points. Good pass to Randolph. Bernard Randolph scores for the ball. No wasted motion by Mark Aguirre. With those great hands, looks and sees. Good two-handed pass. They just don't have enough zip on that ball against the zone, Billy. They're floating. Mike Sanders gets no luck on the shot. Pruitt can't hit the follow. Aguirre collects the carom for DePaul. Dillard in the grubs. What a pass! Well, they're humming. There's no doubt about it. UCLA has to come up again with a timeout. Readjust. There he goes. He lays the ball off on the side. Automatic off the glass. Could have been a three-point play. Here's another angle. Here we see. Dillard is the second guard, but he shows he can handle the ball also. Beautiful pass inside. Great catch by Grubbs. Their only Achilles heel, Bob, is the length of their bench. If they get in foul trouble, they can be, uh, can be a serious situation for them. Ray Meyer has used seven players today. The only subs he's used, Randolph and Moore. And Randolph has really contributed. Well, as I said earlier in the show, he's playing D now, and he's also going for the rebound. saying so what uh, what is he telling him now I, I'm not sure I think he I couldn't hear it that well but I think what he's saying is keep your composure now there's a lot of time left in the game let's try to get that one run at them but of course it's kind of embarrassing I believe that any team that goes to Hawaii or goes to Alaska early in the year or goes to Japan like these people did when they come back they are half the club they were before they went these young people cannot handle the time a reminder again, tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern Time on NBC, Bryant Gumbel with NFL 80, a half hour later, the kickoff, the AFC wildcard game, and what a battle it should be between Bum Phillips, Houston Oilers, and Tom Flores, Oakland Raiders. And, of course, there's some human interest there with the Houston club coming into Oakland with former Raiders stars Stabler and Casper and, of course, the great Earl Campbell. And can Jim Plunkett continue his born-again act with the Oakland Raiders? Those questions answered tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern Time on NBC. DePaul has their biggest lead of the day, 68-45. to 45. UCLA down by 23 with 10.22 left. Pruitt, the jumper, cuts the lead to 21. That was the first tough-angle shot they hit from the outside. They're still going for it. It's too difficult. Pick it up, full court pressure now. Aguirre moves into the backcourt, and he can do that. He has the ability to help him bring the ball up the court. Cummings inside, dishes to Moore for the fadeaway. They didn't get the bucket, Coach, but another example of the way they move the ball so briskly. Everybody on this team can pass. Oh, that's a tough shot by Jackson. Almost tripped and put it up anyway. Yeah, see, they've played together now for about two, three years, mostly so the ball. They know where each other is. They know their role. Oh, that's the key to it. When Bradshaw's out there, they know to get the ball in his hands. When the goal gets tight, they know to give it to Mark Aguirre. Cummings and, and Grubb know to hit the board, so everyone knows their position. The coach, the coach is not going to make many mistakes. He's been around for 39 years. 631 wins. Randolph can't find the mark from 15. Rocket Rod Foster on the boards for UCLA. 
Foster glides through, brings UCLA to within 17 at 68-51 with 9-10 left. Two times down the court, didn't get the ball in McGuire's hands in a shooting position. UCLA in a 1-2-2. Full court pressure, now they're going back into man-to-man. -man. You, you bet you'll see a timeout now. You'll see Bradshaw coming back. Bray is hot. Through it with the Ball, steal you need a and the timeout, and it's a 15-point game. Bradshaw's on the sideline. He'll be looking for Mark McGuire. There he is. McGuire has 21 points. Oh, when in trouble, go to 24. Seventy to fifty-three. The Paul hanging back in the zone. Foster shoots over it. It's short. A whistle on the rebound. They really have it. Not only is the shot selection been tough for UCLA, but they normally will make that jumper. McGuire filled from the outside on this particular pass from Cummings. Great fake inside. There he goes with those hands of his. So he does it with his inside hand, Billy. It's illegal, but he's so strong he clears out with his left arm and puts it up with his right hand. And every time he goes to the that air, he has such balance in his body, he can move oh, the other man out of the way from the inside. Sanders has fouled out. You got to remember, he was just the secondary defender on Aguirre. Have this year, 30 seconds to get a guy in the ball game. It's created a couple of technicals around the country. The Bruins call. And there is Mike Sanders, who picked up the last foul for UCLA. There is a timeout at the Horizon Center with 8 minutes and 21 seconds to play in the game. And we'll be right back with DePaul up by 17. Economy cars. There sure are a lot of them around. But check out their sticker prices, and many don't seem quite so economical anymore. Fortunately, Chevy Chevette isn't like most economy cars. Because not only does Chevette offer good gas mileage, like this, it also offers you a low Chevy price, like this. So why buy an economy car that just saves you gas when you can buy a Chevy Chevette, best-selling small car in America, and one tough son of a gun. You're looking at the best standard of shampoo money can buy because it's been clinically proven best. Testing at a major medical school proved it works faster, gives more complete dandruff control than any leading dandruff shampoo. It's Selsin Blue, the only leading shampoo with the anti-dandruff ingredient doctors prescribe most. No other brand has it. Try Selsin Blue. It simply works best. Coming up next, following our college basketball game on NBC, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, another installment of Sports World with World Cup powerlifting, the agility as well as the size and girth of Japanese sumo wrestlers, and the World Ice Speedway Motorcycle Championship, plus other features on NBC's Sports World. Bob Costas with Al McGuire and Billy Packer, 8.21 to play in the game. DePaul 70, UCLA 53. DePaul has the ball, and while we have an opportunity, Al and Billy, We'll pass along our condolences to the family and many friends of J.D. Morgan, the longtime athletic director at UCLA, who passed away a few weeks ago. Yeah, he was John Wooden's right arm man. He was uh, a great AD. DePaul almost lost it. Aguirre hustled and got it back, and here comes Aguirre handling the ball like a guard and finding Randolph into Cummings. Who hits it? Completely unselfish. He was the nation's number one basketball player last year by many picks. Along with uh, Carl Griffith, of course, from uh, Louisville. But he showed you he's a complete player in that last game. Foster hit the bucket for UCLA. Now DePaul comes back with Dillard, and Dillard can't connect. Nice rebound by Kenny Fields. One freshman showing he can go on the boards with anybody. Foster took it one on three. It was Foster against the world that time, Al, and he got the two. Well, DePaul better slow down. UCLA is good. They're number three in the nation. You can't get into that track meet. Give the ball to Clyde Bradshaw, and he'll neutralize all pressure. Oh, oh, up by 15. Fields bats it back in Randall's face and out of bounds. Blue Demon ball. It's very difficult to keep your composure right now if you're DePaul. You've been in a position to be in a big working margin for a long, long time. Hard to stay patient. This man will keep patient. He's got four fouls on him, remember? 
Exactly seven minutes left as Cummings misses. But it's tipped in. Bernard Randolph. Mr. B.R. Bernard Randolph. Randolph is now in double figures with 10 off the bench for Raymeyer. Jackson cross court today. Open jumper. Spins out. Kenny Fields, the freshman, rebounds and misses. Out of bounds. Who has it? UCLA. UCLA shown a lot of heart. Of course, it's a very, very young team. They're not a senior on this ball club. And they'll be going up against an Arizona State that's playing out of sight, an Oregon State that's playing well. It'll be a tough, tough race in the back 10 Ball's late at 17, and there you see the time remaining. Nice back door moves by both the wingmen. Spreading it out. Yeah, they're isolating the ball as best they can, trying to get one-on-one -on -one situation. Good time to be patient. Let the defense make the first mistake. You'll see a change of pace here. Back door should end up in the layup. And there's the foul on That's Darren Day, five. and I believe he is fouled out. Number five. So two starters, Mike Sanders and number 30, Darren Day, have fouled out for UCLA. One of the big uh, differences in this game in the material is obviously the maturity of the body of the poor players. They're just that much stronger than the UCLA players. And they never allowed UCLA to get into their running game. And this time last year, they, they kind of had the same problem to pull. All about the ball, excuse me, UCLA. All of a sudden, they got it together, and they just about missed touching the wizard. You know, there's an interesting contrast, Al, between the two teams which right now both claim to be number one, Kentucky and DePaul. DePaul does it all with five, sometimes six men, certainly six today, because Randolph has played very well. Kentucky is just depth on top of more depth. Well, I, I've said many times, Bob, I, I think that the difference is that Kentucky does not have that much maturity on their team. And there's also some indecision of who's playing what particular position. You know, a guy gets a hot hand. They got so many great players in the backcourt there with that, uh, what, a, uh, Billy Beal is uh, an outstanding freshman. Mastered, and Masters. Ford. Uh, Minifield is, you know, I'll tell you what things. Kentucky does have, though, if they ever go up against uh, DePaul's club. Freddie Cowan and Chuck Verderber. They have two power guys that could go in there and use up 10 fouls if they had to with defensively. Bernard Randolph goes out having scored 12 points. Kenny Grubbs back in to replace him, and Foster is fouled as he cuts through the lane. Well, we're forget, we're forgetting him. best player on Kentucky is Big Sam, Sam Boone. Well, that'll be another factor. They also have a man that can replace him in a substitution role, so it's a very deep team. And Let's hope all of us here in college basketball land get an opportunity to see them go against each other somewhere in the course of the year. A lot of wet socks left before March. <laughs> They'll have their hands full in their own league also because the Southeastern Conference, Florida's making a nice run. Georgia's a good club, and LSU, of course, another top 10 team. So that's going to be a tough win. And Tennessee's had some big wins. Cracker Jack Jackson goes out, Cliff Pruitt back in. 5.46 remaining. DePaul by 18 at 76.58. Earlier in this game, Foster missed a free throw. It was his first and only miss of the season. He hits two here. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press. Bradshaw to Dillard. Baseline grubs for the slam. When you go against the press, you penetrate back out and in. And that's what Clyde Bradshaw did that time. You notice how Dillard was one pass ahead even before he caught that ball. Whirling move up. by Foster and another foul. Wow, you talk about a water bug. He, he's wow. just making plays up now. Where do you see this turn that he makes? Now, this, is the, this is the offensive play on the inside down the other end. Beautiful play. Bradshaw really set that up as he threw the ball back out to Dillard who was looking ahead beautifully. Hit Grubbs inside. That's why I said before, I didn't know in the first half how they could call Foster for a charge. He's so quick, there'd be no way you could ever land your feet down to draw one against him. And Foster hits the first of two with 5.24 left, bringing his club to within 18 again. 
and now 17 at 78-61. Dwyer becomes the third ball handler against the press. Things are spread out now. Clyde puts zip into his pass. See that? The zip in him. Every time he lets it go, it's like a, like a bullet. And he drops it away. Eddie Grubbs was a little bit off balance because the pass that Bradshaw made, if he been squared up, he'd had himself a layup. 5.05 left, and there's a foul. Anderson over the back of McGuire as Mark reached to receive the pass. Both teams into one and one. There's Tony Anderson who committed the foul. McGuire at the line. In a national publication, Al, you pick the five best players in America. Prior to the start of the season, McGuire was one of them. Yes, I oh, you can't miss. That was obvious. That wasn't difficult at all. The other was Albert King, who I think is the class of his class from Maryland. Isaiah Thomas from Indiana, Sam Bowie from Kentucky, and let me wait a second. <laughs> Ralph Sampson. And Ralph, oh, yeah, Ralph Dick Sampson, Super Sam from Virginia. You know what's interesting, too? You talk about that class. You know who would be just a senior in college basketball right now? Magic Johnson. <laughs> would he be something else in college? We hope he's doing well with that knee injury. Real credit to basketball. 23 now for Aguirre, and again a 19-point DePaul lead at 80-61, inside five minutes to play. And with this lead, DePaul's been zoned the entire second half. Jackson, double pumping, passing off to Pruitt, it's deflected over to Anderson, rejected, Fields follows and hits. There's a whistle, and let's see whether the basket counts or not. Teddy Grubbs did a nice job coming over, making a first block. Here comes Anderson across the lane. Wire gets a piece of it. And there was Mark McGuire just getting a touch on the follow-up. See, Mark McGuire's a step jumper, Billy. He couldn't go back up that second time. So Fields will have a chance for a three-point play. The clock stopped with 4.46 left. Larry, Larry's trying to keep his team together. Al, some people worry about Mark Aguirre's defense, not so much his ability to play it, but his willingness to play it all the time. What do you think? Well, uh, he's putting out this year. He's taking his man. He's taking pride in trying to stop him. Uh, I've never, as Billy said earlier in the show, I've never seen a young fella do a 180 turn like he's done. In the freshman year, you know, he was kind of, uh, I guess, a little puffy. He seemed to have matured so much, especially when UCLA beat him down in Tempe, Arizona. Back Dead. door cut. Yep. Nice play by Pruitt. That was a set play. Bradshaw picked it up nicely. Foster all the way, and it won't count. He traveled. The speed moves so fast. Booker Turner almost uh, said, oh, wait a second, let's take a retake. You know, I think another thing has helped Mark McGuire a lot was that experience he got on the Olympic team. It's something that he really wanted to have chalked up beside his name and his career as a basketball player. And, of course, on that Olympic squad, they had so many fellows that had to go ahead and, you know, play the tough man-to-man -to -man defense. That tour against the pros. Aguirre asked for a timeout with four minutes and one second remaining. You're going to see them go to delays now. DePaul leads it by 16 at 80-64. to 64. We'll come back to the Horizon Center in just a moment. All over the world, Wang is a leader in office technology. Word processing, data processing, and now with our new electronic mail system, you can send all kinds of information from one part of the world to another. So New York can be around the corner from Paris, London from Tokyo, and San Francisco next to Rome. Wang, making the world more productive by bringing it closer together. Paul was ranked number one in one poll, number two in another last week out. The other club involved is Kentucky. Now, I'm thinking that maybe DePaul would be undisputed number one after an impressive victory like this, apparently at least, over UCLA. But on the other hand, Kentucky has already beaten Indiana and Ohio State from the Big Ten, and they've got Notre Dame tonight. If they beat the Irish, they can lay claim just as well as DePaul to number one. If they win, both teams will stay exactly where they are at the present time. And when they beat Bobby Knight's team, that was in Bloomington, Indiana, which is not an easy thing to do. Inside four minutes to play in the ball game. The power, the power of Aguirre. Anderson leaning right on him, and Aguirre just pushing him off of his body. They're in delays now. The shot they're going to take has to be a very high percentage shot. They're looking for the one and one foul Five situation. Seconds. They're looking to eat up the clock. Five eat seconds. Up. 
Grubbs has his pass deflected, but Moore is there to pick it up. Cummings. Just going to eat the clock, wind it down, spread them out, maybe get a layup back to Grubbs, one back to him. Oh, you see that move, between the legs and back again. UCLA desperate reaching in and fouling both clubs over the limit. One and one coming. A reminder when the ball game's over in Sports World on NBC. For the Demons, 22, Bernard Randolph replaces Teddy Grubb. They'll take an awfully good ball club to beat the ball. I think probably the ball will beat themselves. You know, Al, let's talk about another thing here. You've got the Paul of the of the clubs. There's a number five, Michigan versus Washington, of course, in the Rose Bowl, back in a football situation. Big game yesterday on the Fiesta Bowl. That big win they had over Ohio State. Nothing Larry Brown could do about it now. Dennis Moore hit the follow shot off the rebound. 82-64, they're up by 18, exactly three minutes to play. Jumper by Anderson is good. One thing he can do is not book Japan again in the middle of the season. <laughs> Whoever booked them. <laughs> in addition to the Rose Bowl, on New Year's Day on NBC, the oldest of all the bowls, Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson at the microphones. Bradshaw bouncing off to Randolph, who was hammered. And Randolph will come to the line to shoot two. In addition to that game on New Year's night, the Orange Bowl. And that could very well determine the team, which will wind up number one. Number two, Florida State, faces fourth-ranked Oklahoma. So three of the top five teams in the nation will be in action on NBC on New Year's Day in the Rose Bowl and then the Orange Bowl. Don Cricky and John Brody drawing the assignment to call that one on NBC. Well, I was going to say about DePaul's situation here, we've been talking about Kentucky an awful lot, but in DePaul's situation, being an independent, they're not going to have to go up against pressure back league games in order to get their place in the NCAA tournament. And I think their schedule... What did you say? Their schedule is going to allow them, of course, to not maybe have to be as consistent as a UCLA oh, Billy, Kentucky. that's so much baloney. I, I heard can't. that from you conference <laughs> people so long. And hey, let me play Georgia Tech from the ACC. That's the only one you want. Hey, how about, <laughs> Billy, the last 14 years when North Carolina had the hot hand, Wake Forest, Virginia, and Clemson did not win 40% of their games. What are you talking about? When you have a weak team in the conference, you play them twice. We could go on forever with that one, Bob. Well, I just get up tight every time I hear it because I coach an independent team for... And, that's why, that's why oh, you defend but it. but that's the ACC and the Big Ten all the baloney. Randolph hit the two free throws, Foster the jumper. You got McGuire in the game now, McGuire and McGuire. Yeah. Dennis <laughs> McGuire is number 21. He's a senior forward, 6'7", for the ball. Jump you ball. Know, you know, in fairness to McGuire, and I'm talking about the other one, because I don't want to talk about this you one You wouldn't anymore. be fair to this guy no. under any circumstances. But talk about Ray, there he is. There's but, the guy. There's Mr. Chicago. But Dennis, There's Second let, City. Let me talk about Dennis McGuire a second. He is the guy that matches up day in, day out against Mark McGuire. Plays him tough every day, giving him the competition. Job, certainly well, deserves a lot of credit. Be tough to lean on that guy every day in practice. 207 left. Aguirre clutches the tip. Give UCLA credit here. They're playing hard man to man. No pouting. Acting like champions. Turnover against the Mark Aguirre. He's a clever ball handler out there I'm for a big man. UCLA has just called their last timeout. The situation is all but hopeless for them, obviously. A minute 58 remaining, and DePaul in front, 84 68. Hey, man, I want natural light. A dapper skyscraper like you, Switch? Sure, for me, natural light's great taste run hoops around everyone else. And there's nothing artificial in this less filling beer. It's made with only natural ingredients. Yeah, but taste is why I switched. Hey! Oh, nice, cashmere. Oh, you can call it cashmere, you can call it reindeer. Or you can call for more beer. Natural light. Taste is why you'll switch. On NBC Sports World, see the strength of World Cup powerlifting, then power and tradition clash in the sport of sumo wrestling, plus World Cannonball and Belly Flop Championships later today. 
most valuable player for today's game. Mark McGuire has got 23 points, closing in on double figures in rebounding, and so Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 check to the General Scholarship Fund at DePaul. This money will be used to assist students in furthering their chosen academic fields of interest and is not restricted to athletes. 23 points and 8 rebounds. No doubt about it, Mark McGuire, the MVP. Coach Ray Meyer had the best recruiting crop in the country when Mark McGuire stayed. <laughs> Jackson for UCLA to Rod Foster. Foster improvising and hitting. Oh, off the board. He's unbelievable. Dennis Moore into the front court for Clyde Bradshaw with a minute 42 left. Bradshaw to Dennis McGuire. Look at that pass. It doesn't work. Randolph went up and couldn't hit it. Foster again. Bradshaw has it. Oh, oh nice stand. Look at Randolph. Randolph can dunk. Lost the handle. Getting a little ragged now. And Foster and Aguirre passed each other as they turned back toward the free throw line and they exchanged handshakes and pats on the back. The All great athletes out there. His third. Hey, he must have taken his vest off at halftime. He had a, a three-piece suit on the first half. Larry still staying in the ball game right here. Bernard Randolph, one and the bonus. Randolph missing, the ball out of bounds to UCLA. The executive producer of NBC's basketball is Don Olmeyer. Coordinating producer George Finkel. The telecast of today's game has been produced by Kenneth Edmondson as Cliff Pruitt hits for UCLA. Our director today was Harry Coyle. Technical director, Bruce Berkwitz. Associate director, John Labretto. Associate producer, Bill Peters. And our unit manager, Bob Williams. As I said earlier, Bradshaw breaks all presses just by himself. Just give him the ball, and he'll go through his own press or a man-to-man -man press, combination press. What I like about him, too, is not only beating the presses, but when he feels his team is tired. Now, they know that they're, you know, Bradshaw's been around. He knows that they don't have a long bench. He'll slow the game down a little bit. Please play a tempo type ball game. You notice when he plays, Billy, he, he always had his head up. He, yep. He's covering the whole court. Instinct. Great, great player. Dennis Moore at the line for DePaul with a minute two left. 85-72. 86-72. A 14-point lead. Goes the water bug. Ralph Jackson, Cliff Pruitt. Pruitt got it and a foul on the play. Well, with Cummings out of the ball game right now, UCLA taking that ball to hoops. Cummings and Grubbs, of course, eliminate that kind of play earlier. This Larry is Brown is still coaching like it's a two-point game. Well, that that's the type of person he is. You know, they got a fella sitting out the red shirt this year at the pool. The guy came from San Francisco. And McCoy, his name is, and he's going to take Bradshaw's place. So uh, he won't be a Bradshaw for a year or two. They say he's outstanding. He's from Chicago. Aguirre adds one more rebound to his personal total as Pruitt misses. Bradshaw. Ooh, oh, he looked one way. Dennis Carter. Aguirre. Sensational pass. Uh, we, maybe we should have split that MVP between him and uh, Aguirre. Last week you had trouble with the MVP. How about one is enough? What's Here's a left-handed pass. Looking one way, throwing it left hand. Now there's it. There's McGuire blowing up and scoring. First McGuire that scored two in a long, long time. <laughs> uh, and he's still plays Irish. I'm more shanty. McGuire's going out, Al. Well, oh, there it is. There's a great shot. What a great shot. There you are. That's all she wrote. We have him coming back here on national TV against a real good club from the East, Syracuse. Ray, Ray's up. Ray's 27-year-old coach right now. 67 years of age. And now Bradshaw has gone out, and he too gets a hug from Ray Meyer. You know, they really worked for this game. At practice yesterday, there was no kidding around. Everything was uh, down to the short strokes. Well, Ray said that that was the best week of practice that the Paul team has had in a long, long time, and they showed it here today. Well, they left their confessional box, 
where they sat 5,000 people, alumni hall. They moved out of urban Chicago, out to suburbia, out here, where they seat approximately 18,000. Chicago has their darlings in DePaul. They haven't had a championship since 63. Loyola did it then in basketball, and the Bears did it in football. Ray Meyer is getting all of his subs into the ball game now. Nice pass. Tony Anderson off the good pass from Jackson for UCLA. 89-76 with 34 seconds. Sam Manella is in the ball game now. And this is Jerry McMillan, the only freshman on the Paul squad. McMillan all the way. Oh! Basket should count. He's the other kid from New Jersey. Yep. The only other kid that's come out of state. Him and Clyde Bradshaw. I think he's from Newark, New Jersey. Same area. This is what you'll be seeing right after the conclusion of our ball game on NBC Sports World. Brett Burkholder is also on the floor now. <laughs> Burkholder, a transfer from Rice, 6'10", and a sophomore. What happened on the sideline then, Billy? What happened on the sideline? Hey, you see Mark McGuire loving the fans, but what happened is that the basket really should have counted. The officials hadn't scored it yet. Ray Meyer went up there to get their attention. When they grabbed the basket, Larry Brown ran up, so that's been the story of my entire day. But this game really hadn't been officiating. This has been the power of the ball against a very young but aggressive UCLA Look at team. this, like a college campus. This whole place is singing out here. What are they singing? I, don't, I can't hear it through my earphones. They're singing that na na hey hey goodbye chant, which Harry Carey popularized with the Chicago White Sox. All the baseball fans here sing it after a White Sox home run. Oh. It's become a theme song in Chicago. Only in college basketball, only in college sports, you see something like this. Now, sometimes the playoffs and pro sports, you see it. 20 seconds left. Oh, Sam, going in. Oh. Brett Burkholder gets him up. He's a transfer from Rice University, set out last year, has a bad ankle, hasn't been playing much. Anderson has it stolen by Burkholder. Ahead to McMillan. One second. He puts it in. No basket. The basket will not count. That's academic. The Ray ball, Meyer, the, the ball does not want to leave. They want to stay here. It's probably the finest moment in athletics in the Paul's history, in my opinion, inside Chicago. I know they won the NIT. I know they went to the Final Four. But this they did it in Chi Town. They did it for Winston City. There's the man. There's the father image of Chicago. He took Mayor Daly's place. So DePaul is now 9-0. UCLA, which had been ranked number three, falls to 6-1. That's it from Chicago, where the final score is DePaul 93 and UCLA 77. For Al McGuire and Billy Packer, I'm Bob Costas. Happy holidays, everybody. Now stay tuned for NBC's Sports World. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports. We're proud to bring you the best in sports television.